The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today as we finish the week on this Saturday the 8th. We continue in the book of Nehemiah. Today we'll have chapters 4 and 5. So let's hear God's word together and pray together on this Saturday. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Hear the word of the Lord from Nehemiah the 4th chapter verses 1 through 14 entitled opposition to the work. Now when Sanibel heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he was angry and greatly engaged, enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. And he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up? <coughs> Excuse me. Will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, Yes, what they are building. If a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt to their own heads and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Do not cover their guilt, and let their sin, not their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. So we built the wall, and the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward, and that the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. In Judah it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rubble. By ourselves we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And our enemies said, they will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. At that time the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us ten times, You must return to us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I stationed the people by their clans with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is your great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. So far the word of the Lord. The weary and wary Judeans support one another with the counsel of Nehemiah. Today do not let the taunts of unbelievers or naysayers keep you from fulfilling your calling. The great and powerful Lord, he who stopped, who stooped to bear our burdens and save us in Christ, is always with you in your work. We pray. Great and awesome Lord, I remember and praise your good works, the work on my behalf, O Lord, that I may fulfill your purpose for me. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue now in chapter 4 at verse 15. The work resumes. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction, and half held the spears, shields, bows, and coats of maul. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah, who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were loaded in such a way that each laborer on the work, with one hand, held his weapon with the other. And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side while he built. The man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. And I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, The work is great and widely spread, and we are separated on the wall far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So we labored at the work, and half of them held the spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, Let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem that they may be a guard for us by night and may labor by day. So neither I nor my brother nor my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me, none of us took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon at his right hand. So far the word of the Lord. 
Nehemiah encourages ever more vigilant service by reminding the workers that our God will fight for us. Whether the struggle is physical, mental, or spiritual, the Lord rallies to our side. Enact every sound plan with confidence in his blessing. Just as he overcame Satan at the cross, he will overcome obstacles you too may face. We pray. Grant me full confidence in your will, O Lord, that I may take the battle to my enemies with boldness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. On to Nehemiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 13, entitled, Nehemiah Stops oppression of the poor. Now there arose a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish brothers, for there were those who said, With our sons and our daughters we are many. So let us, so let us get grain that we may eat and keep alive. There were also those who said, We are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our houses to get grain because of the famine. And there were those who said, We have borrowed money for the king's tax on our fields and our vineyards. Now our flesh is as the flesh of our brothers, our children are as, the ch as their children. Yet we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves, and some of our daughters have already been enslaved. But it is not in our power to help it, for other men have our fields and our vineyards. I was very angry when I heard their outcry in these words. I took counsel with myself, and I brought charges against the nobles. And the officials, I said to them, you are exacting interest, each from his brother. And I held a great assembly against them. And I said to them, we, as far as we are able, have bought back our Jewish brothers who have been sold to the nations. But you even sell your brothers that they may be sold to us? They were silent and could not find a word to say. So I said, the thing that you are doing is not good. Ought you not walk in the fear of our God to prevent the taunts of the nations of our enemies? Moreover... I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us abandon this exacting of interest. Return to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards, and their houses, and the percentage of money, grain, wine, and oil that you have been exacting from them. Then they said, We will restore these and require nothing from them. We will do as you say. And I called the priests and made them swear to do as they had promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, so may God shake out every man from his house and from his labor who does not keep this promise. So may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said amen and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. So far the word of the Lord. Governor Nehemiah addresses the problems caused by excessive interest rates and taxes and sets an example of generosity for the leaders. In politics, we all know that words are cheap, but goodwill is rare, and good deeds are rarer still. When people are unfairly burdened, we can follow Nehemiah's example by relieving them, whether by providing for fairer laws or by helping them directly. At all times, let us give praise to Christ, who sets more, who sets more than a good example, for he has freely borne our debt of sin and guilt. Let us pray. We praise your generous ways, O Lord, and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the last of chapter 5, beginning at verse 14, entitled Nehemiah's Generosity. Moreover, from that time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year to the 32nd year of Articius, the king, 12 years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allowance of the governor. The former governors who were before me laid heavy burdens on the people and took from them for their daily ration, 40 shekels of silver. Even their servants lorded it over the people. But I, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. I also preserved in the work on this wall, persevered on the work on... I also persevered in the work on this wall, and we acquired no land, and all my servants were gathered there for the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 men, Jews and officials, besides those who came to us from the nations that were around us. Now what was prepared at my expense for each day was one ox and six choice sheep and birds, and every ten days all kinds of wine in abundance. Yet for all this I did not demand the food allowance of the governor, because the service was too heavy on this people. 
Remember for my good, O oh my God, all that I have done for this people. So far the word of the Lord. Nehemiah sets an excellent example for his countrymen of generosity that honors the Lord, the Lord our maker. As the Lord grants you opportunity, lead others by good example. Call for the Lord's blessing. He who blessed you through baptism and faith in his name will provide for your every need in Christ. We pray. Grant me a heart for sincere, heart for sincere service, O Lord, that I may bless my neighbors and my colleagues. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Having heard God's word, we now conclude in prayer on this eighth day of October, remembering the God's gift of holy baptism. We pray for all the baptized, that in daily repentance all might cling to God's promises of forgiveness and eternal life in Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the Lord's mercy upon all of us and upon all peoples they have need. For the word of God to be preached in truth and purity, for those who hear that they may be convicted of sin, brought to repentance and know the grace of forgiveness, and for those newly baptized and those to be baptized into Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church of Christ, for newly planted congregations, for the mission work of the church, for the teaching ministry, for the catechumens, and for our synod, district circuit, and those who lead us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.